we're glad to know that you're there and uh, it's time to look at the headlines from our papers. We're being joined by a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State, in the person of Mr. Jide Johnson. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you and good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at some of the headlines on some of the national dailies. Uh, we're beginning this morning with the Punch newspaper. Uh, the Punch newspaper leads with the story, Reps reallocate 5 billion naira yacht vote, uh, Navy clears Tinubu. And the writers on that story are Navy, not Tinubu, uh, requested the yacht for operations. That's according to Presidency and Naval spokesman. And then Senate okays 17.5 billion uh, naira yacht, Air Fleet, Reps approve. Uh, 54 or 546 billion naira defense budget okay so your comment on that the senate passed that uh, uh, section of the bill or it passed the bill uh, including the five uh, the five uh, billion naira um, for the yacht to buy the yacht for the president at, at least that's what the people felt it was and then the house of reps said no they are not going to pass it like that. They took down that five billion and added it to the student loans. Would like to hear your comment on uh, the whole thing. First, there will be reconciliation between the version of the bill passed by the reps and that of the Senate, so that they can forward a cleaner bill to the president for his assent, mm -hmm. and that that will be done. Uh, and then, secondly, uh, we see that the House of Rep responded more to public outcry yeah. compared to the Senate, which is uh, made up of former chief executive, former governors of respective states. And uh, you could see the difference between the Senate and that of, of the House of Rep. Going forward, uh, we'll see those that will respond to the needs and the yearnings of Nigerians and those that will respond to the needs and the yearnings of the political class. Um, thirdly, um, this issue of this item shouldn't even be part and parcel of what, has, what should have been presented. Forget about the spin with the naval um, spokesperson coming out to say that it is the Navy. They are required. As if Nigerians don't know the difference between a naval gunboat, a naval warship, and in a yacht. It's just like someone telling you that you don't know the difference between a Ferrari and um, a Lamborghini and then. Um, and then um, a, a, a armored personnel carrier vehicle. So um, sometimes they should not take us to be a fool. That particular item is insensitive to 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 to, to, to Nigerians and is is inconsiderate considering the fact that in his independence speech, which is just um, some few weeks away, which was just for some few weeks away, the president said Nigerians should be ready to make sacrifices. You would have expected that that sacrifices will have extended from top to bottom, not the kind of items we are seeing in the supplementary budget. You can't be borrowing money to fund your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. Not even in this state of of, of the economy we have found we have found ourselves. So there's no amount of spin the Navy can do to it, and there's no amount of spin the presidency can do to it. It's, it's a bad item, and I think what the presidency should have done, without even waiting for the Navy spokesperson, is for them to have come out openly and said that, you know what, in view of the public outcry concerning this, we are withdrawing this. And then the presidency will have gained some measure of public sympathy, at least that, well, this is a listening government, and not, um, rather, we have a situation whereby the Senate passed it, the rep um, um, did um, um, what is given to them by the consumer, which is the power to have control over the cost, to move that same amount of money into the student loan, into the student loan scheme. As far as I'm concerned, if you look at it overall, it was bad optics for the government, particularly the presidency, that they will be considering doing all of those items that were listed in that supplementary budget in funding the ostensible lifestyles, which an average Nigerian cannot even afford afford to even survive in this in this in this present economy. The price of foods, goods and services has skyrocketed. Inflation is is is, is unbelievable, um, and the level of poverty has, has seriously increased. So as far as I'm concerned, let's wait for the reconciliation. Otherwise, if you are not careful, um, this particular item will just be swept under the carpet and they said that in reconciliation, 
well, the, the version of the Senate was eventually passed and not the version of the House of Reps. So uh, let's wait for the consult them bill and we see how and look at how quickly they quickly pass such bills mm, yeah. the bills with which the, the 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 speed of light they use in passing such bills such appropriation bill that will fund the lifestyle of people that we have elected in the office we have elected into office and not bills that will address some of the major problems we are facing as a country as nigerians and major economic crisis that nigerians are facing it's unfortunate but Let's wait and see. The, 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 the game has just begun. We, we keep our fingers crossed and we keep drawing attention to that, what we need to draw attention to. But I want to, ta I want to appreciate the Nigerian public um, for putting the heat on government, the outcry, the public opinion against this ostensitional lifestyle made the house of rep, which is more representative in nature um, to, to, to pass the bill. Rejecting that um, that that uh, yach, probably the thought we don't know the difference between a yach and and a naba and a naba ship. Okay, uh, they said because of the fittings on the on this uh, uh, yacht, it was it was supposed to be. But well, that's why they called it presidential and not that it was required by the president. It, it's a very laughable thing anyway. But let's go to what happened in Imo State. Uh, the Imo State uh, government secured an injunction against the um, labor that they should never protest what is happening to them in that state. And in spite of that, the labor went ahead and did a peaceful protest. And um, unfortunately, the uh, president of NLC was um, arrested. In fact, the NLC are using the term he was abducted and then he was brutalized and so many other things that they've said about it. So this headline says, Labor tackles Uzodima, but governor says Ajairo meddling. So Ajairo is meddling in his government by leading the labor union to go and uh, protest in that. I, I don't know what your comment will be on, we are the, seeing, on the punch newspaper. We have, seen the, we have seen the increase. The fact that you have democracy does not mean that you can't see despotic tendencies in those that have been elected into public office. But we have seen the, the growth of despotic, autocratic, unimaginable totalitarian um, um, tendencies from people that we have elected into public office. First, let's talk about the judge. The judge that granted that injunction that there should be in any protest. I think what labor needs to do and all those that are concerned with democracy is to identify that judge, write to the National Judicial Council and such judge and then also write to the to 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 the the, the 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 Nigerian Bar Association and other agencies, whether the the Nigerian what's this name of this body that um, body of ventures, and then that such they should withdraw the legal practice of that judge. That person does not fit to be a judge. I think we need to begin to do some certain things the way it is done outside the shores of this country. How will a judge that studied the constitution that is meant test and the rest of it we issue an injunction i can't i i i can't seem to comprehend that that's on the judicial level on the part of um, the governor the governor should not forget that he's only elected as the executive governor it's not the emperor of the state people have the rights to protest and he cannot accuse anybody of mending Particularly in democracy, majority will have their way, the minority will have their say. So as far as people are concerned, they have the right to express their public opinion, right, right to lawful and peaceful assembly, and right to protest. And anything that infringes on that right underscores the tenets of what democracy is, is all about. And we've seen, we've, seen, we've seen something which you raise red flag for a lot of Nigerians moving forward. Because if you begin to see this, this template, in 2023, how is 2027 going to look like? We saw in River State, whereby the police released water cannon on a sitting governor. And then it's, everything was swept under the carpet. It was like business as usual. And then uh, the, 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 the former governor of River State came out and said, uh, impeachment 
is provided for in the constitution. The constitution does not provide for impunity and abuse. And wherever we see abuse, we must collectively speak against it. What happens to, if that could happen to the national president of Nigerian Labour Congress? It is. In fact, Obasanjo did not treat Adam Sushima. Obasanjo that had a former military, uh, that had a military antecedent, Buhari that had a military antecedent, did not even treat Nigerian Labour president the way the people that did not even live one day in the barracks, they now have executive power, the way they are treating they are treating opposition. It's unfortunate that we have found ourselves in this situation, and then, as usual, nothing will happen to that. As far as I'm concerned, if I'm the president of Nigerian Labour Congress, I will institute a civil a civil case um, against the against the government of Imo State, and then we'll pursue that case to a logical conclusion. And after I, and after it's true with a stand, we institute a criminal case against him because. People have right to protest. If that could happen to the president of Nigeria, what will happen to an average individual? How many people have been battered and have been beaten to a pop because they share a different political opinion that is contrary to the establishment in that state? Imo State is particularly very, very notorious in, in very controversial things when it comes to security and labor uh, problems. And even the coming onto office of uh, the governor till date is still a, a political abracadabra that a lot of people cannot understand how he came well, from Supreme behind. Court, the same Supreme Court that said that ABC did not have a candidate in that election mm. is the same Supreme Court when it comes to, um, I can't recall his name, full name, now, but also I know the in-law of um, the in law of the former governor of uh, Rosato, Rucha Sokorocha, mm -hmm. that said APC did not. It was that same Supreme Court that declared Opus or Dima as a as 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 a governor. So where you have conflicting judgment, and that's why one of the things where a lot of people have lost hope with respect to the credibility of the judiciary. The judiciary is said to be the hope the last two of the common man, but it seems that we have an uncommon judiciary because you'll be hearing contrary judgment coming from the same judiciary with respect to the same. You believe that the principle of the law applies universally. Uh, you see, uh, in one state, the principle is applied. In another state, the principle is not. Same principle of law to case of similar of, of similar tendencies. It's unfortunate. Okay. Okay, so we will move to uh, another newspaper, possibly uh, the Nation newspaper right now. And we're taking the headlines from the Nation newspaper. And what it says is that um, uh, reverse crisis, why we are with Tinubu by PDP governors. And uh, under that, we have that... Um, a situation capable of breaking down security. I'll protect party structure, according to well, WK insist. Uh, you've just mentioned something that he said now, that uh, impeachment is a, a constitutional provision. Uh, it's not a coup like in the military and all that. And people keep asking That's the right. question, what's the difference between a civilian planning to outseat uh, the, uh, unseat the, uh, the, the government or the governor and the military also trying to unseat the governor. So is what's the difference? Now, you can't eat your cake and have it. First and foremost, which party, which structure is Wiki talking about? Is Wiki a member of PDP or is he a member of APC? Hmm. That's the question that needs to be asked. If he's talking about political structure, if he wants to still be in PDP and at the same time be a minister under an APC government, Mm. then it means that uh, there's more to it that we don't know. Uh, because if, you, if some PDP governors are saying that they are okay and comfortable with the president resolving an internal PDP crisis, because the, P, the governor is a PDP-elect governor, I thought that when the PDP will use the instrumentality of their internal machinery to resolve the matter. But um, what you have is what some people have called PD APC. APC. And uh, that's the arrangement we have, and that's why you have seen that some of the governors were even taking going to 
to visit the minister is unfortunate. While instead of siding with the, their fellow governor, they are siding with the former governor and who happens to be a minister. So which structure is Wiki talking about? And when people are talking about this, people are just short on memory in Nigeria. Don't forget that when Wiki was minister of state for education, and then Jonathan was the president, Wiki made an attempt, or uh, people loyal to Wiki in PDP then, made an attempt to impeach Amechi as a governor. Mm. And that house, and that house where they, they, they I, I, I recall there are video evidence whereby um, the mace, the mace was broken on one of the one of the members, uh, and then the, 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 the there was a fracas in that particular in that you the fact that the commission makes a provision for impeachment. There are higher grounds that you must follow before that impeachment. Not people guarding in the middle of the night, or not people guarding in the in, in, in the early hours of the day, protected by police, police condoning people from assessing it, and then you quickly move an impeachment order without serving the notice, without going through the process and procedure that is provided. You see, the way we go about it, it's like sometimes when you look at this democracy, you begin to wonder whether this democracy is a cost. That probably um, the people we have given the opportunity to supertend over this democracy don't even understand the values, the tenets, and the principles and the norms of what democracy democracy is all about. You see, people justify criminality, and that's that's that starts the danger. If we continue on this path, you see, no matter how long you travel on the wrong on the wrong track, you will never get to your destination. No matter how people, no matter how, if we continue on this path, I can assure you, if you continue on the path of the fact that you can't have a free and fair election, the part that you have too many litigation after elections, the part that several months after the election, some senators have been removed, some of our rep members have been removed in an election in which we expended a lot of money, and then we now have off-site pool election in which INEC is asking for 18 billion naira, and the same story will repeat itself. You have a situation whereby in Imo, the the, Nash, the president of NSC was beaten to a pop. We have a situation circulating in, 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 in the media and social media, whereby state resources are being used to book all the hotels in Kogi State and in Owerinimo State for one week, and then using state resources to, 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 to book all the hotels for, for electoral purposes. Then there's much to this democracy that we can see. As far as I'm concerned, uh, those governors that are calling for the president to intervene, it's just a matter of time. They will come to APC. There's nothing, there's no, they will come to APC. We, we, are, we saw the trend in 2003. We saw the trend in 2007 after the emergence of Yadua. So we saw the trend in 2014. So it will not be out of place for you to see the trend that is just a matter of time that some of the PDP governors will just go to APC in order for them to secure a second term. In office. Okay. That's the easiest and easiest to win to win election. Okay, and let's just part. let's just wrap it up with this uh, question here. Relief as CBN um, this uh, headline rather relief as CBN begins clearing seven billion dollars effects uh, obligations. Uh, we hear that because of this, even the naira gained a little bit by fifty naira, I think, uh, in the market. It's so uh, this is on daily trust relief as CBN begins clearing seven billion FX obligation. In fact, almost all the papers are carrying this, and um, would like to hear your confidence or otherwise on uh, the naira really gaining as much as the government is telling us that by December it will come down to less than a thousand naira. Look, the value of naira will not appreciate until we deal with the avarious demand of the political class for dollar. Check out the transaction and the currency of preference of people holding political offices in Nigeria. Which currency is the currency of preference? In terms of transaction, in terms of exchange, is the dollar. The the, 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 the quest for dollar as a currency of exchange 
by the political class from local government chairman, from local government chairman to state house of assembly members to governors to national assembly members to senators and to um, ministers and people working in the presidency. If you look at the the, the, the quest and the demand for the dollar as the currency of preference, then you understand why Naira has lost a significant value. The question you ask is that why as the currency of Republic of Benin that is not producing any oil or that of Coup d'Ivoire or that of Ghana okay, or yeah. that of Togo or that of Bidi, why as the value of their own currency, okay. why has it not uh, collapsed absolutely like our own. We, we have it on good authority that there was a governor, any types of states collect their, the local government collect their allocation. They will ask them to go and change it to dollar and they will bring the dollar value to it. It's, it's unfortunate. Look, dealing with the issue of Naira, it's very simple. The exchange rate is very, very simple. Mm. It is a very, 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 very simple approach. Okay. Yeah, and well. do we have do we have the political will to do it? Okay. We forget about the CBN and the rest of it. It's just the political will to do what is needful. And I tell you, the value yeah. of Naira will appreciate. It. Okay. Uh, well, we do hope that uh, the present administration will have that political uh, will to do the needful. This unfortunately is here. We are going to uh, end our segment of, of the press this morning. We're, there are so many other um, uh, headlines that we could have loved to talk, but we'd like to thank you for your time this morning, Mr. Johnson. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Have a wonderful weekend. You too, sir. Uh, Mr. G.T. Johnson is the chief lecturer or is a chief lecturer in Nigerian Institute of Journalism here in Lagos State. He joined us for Off the Press. Right now, we're going to bring you a recap of what happened in the course of the week. First of all, we're going to take something uh, on uh, River State, uh, the imbroglio in River State, and the, uh, and the questions that were answered there. Uh, to debunk some of the claims that were flying around in the social media. And after that, we're going to take back to back um, uh, an interview we had with two young women who were lured into going to Dubai for lucrative jobs and ended up as sex slaves so that people stay informed. Stay with us. <laughs> 